Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode. So let's get to it. I want to unhitch that one. So that I can go back up round this way and I can grab the cultivator. And then we can get into field 8 and we can make a start on that one. Just probably do one line along the bottom end here. And then I can pretty much just let the hired help carry on and do the rest of it. I don't think it's going to need much more assistance than that. And then, of course, is ploughing. We, we need to be able to join field 11 and uh, 9 and 10, it is, isn't it, up the top. Join those in. Let's get you. I love this cultivator. I really do. It's, it's quite impressive, the sheer monstrous size of this beast. It's definitely an impressive beastie. Slowly, slowly start unfolding that. There we go. Look at that. Bring that one out through. Down it goes. And... Right. That is quite an impressive sight. All of that one going through and unfolding like that. Uh, F1, have I got... I do have the allow create fields with the cultivator. So I could just use this cultivator and join the fields together with this one. Which I might actually do, I think. I think that's probably just going to be the quickest and easiest way to do it. Uh, not necessarily this cultivator right here. Um, we get another one, and we get that onto the other big bud, and we'll let it do it with that. So it can join everything in together for us, and do all, do all of that nice work for us, and then we're not going to have to worry about it. And bring you around like that. Gently does it. We don't want to overdo things. Now, once we actually get started with our cotton harvest... Several people were saying that you thought I should be recreating kind of the, um, the, uh, what was it, the trailer for FS19, where I've got like three or four cotton harvesters all working in the field together, going up across the fields. We're going to give it a go. We are going to give it a go. I don't know how well it's going to work, because I'm, I'm kind of thinking about how we can make that work so that we can have set, keep them running. We'll, we'll try and keep them a few machine widths apart so that they can at least sort of go up and down the field a, a couple of times before they have to um <clears throat> before they have to be sort of moved around that would that would be the easiest way of doing it i think right i lift you up round i'm gonna set the hired help going on this we've got the last combine has now just finished at the top straighten you up and bring you in this way like that I know I'm overlapping the edge a little bit, but I think that'll be all right. And press H. Now, it should, in theory... Yes, excellent, fantastic. It's going to carry on and do all of that. It's not going to have any problems whatsoever. So we get that one all nicely cultivated very, very quickly. You are done. So let's just start you up and move you over. And then the other one is over there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you over this way, like that. And then I'm going to go back to you, this one. Now I'll bring you out. And I'll load this one up into... Well, unload this one, sorry, into that trailer. And then while that one's unloading, I will drive the other combine down and get that one unloaded. So I go back through to you. I need to start you up. Right. Close you like that and start folding you up. You've got to wait until the auger is all the way in before you can start folding it. Which is the opposite in FS15. Uh, sorry, FS17. You could start folding it up as the auger was moving in. And it was quite cool because the auger would fold as it was closing as well. It sort of made it like the whole thing was synchronized really well. Um, uh, but that's not a thing you can do in this anymore. Which is a little bit of a shame. I would like to still be able to do that, but still, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very minor detail, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's bring you back to there like that, and lower that one down, and switch you off. Right, you're done. I'm going to go back to this one, drive this one down across the field. We do exactly the same. We'll fold away that auger right there, and then once we've done that bit, then we can start folding you up. 
Why? Oh, whoops. Uh, let's do that. And then go back to that one. I don't want to fold up the header. I want to leave the header as it is. I want to fold the combine. I had it. I had the wrong one selected. You, 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 you may have guessed. So let's just bring this one down and park it up before I destroy any more on that header. These headers aren't cheap. It's not the sort of thing that you want to go and destroy. Let's move that up a little tiny bit. Get them in line. There we go. That's lined up. Switch you off. Right now, where is my? Oh wait. Now that you're up here, let, let me turn off the hired help a second. You're up this way. We will manually drive... Actually, I don't even need to manually drive it. What I can do is I can just back it up to this end. I can set the hired help going just on this end. Like this. Back you through. And press H again. So it'll do a nice straight line along the top. That's, that's the important thing here is it will do a straight line. And then there's actually going to be enough room. You can see how far up it went before it started trying to do its turn. So there should, in theory, if I one pass along the top, that should be enough room for the big bud to do its own turning. I shouldn't need to do any more than that. At least that's what I'm hoping. We'll see. We will we'll, we'll, we'll find out fairly quickly and easily. I'm surprised. He actually got all the way up to the top end of the field in that short a space of time. It is reasonably... I say reasonably, it's very impressive, actually. So that's a lot. You look how far he went. Right there, you can see how far he went with it. It's a very long way to go. That is a lot of cultivating that we've covered in a very short space of time. Now, the next bit is we've actually got, like, the whole of this side of the field is at an angle. And that's the bit that takes a little bit more time. So I know, yes, we are going to have all of this space down through here, which is technically going to be wasted, but it's also fairly uneven ground. If you do, if you look a bit closely at it, it is fairly uneven. I could do one cultivator width all the way down the side of this field. And I think that would probably, you know, be a reasonably good idea, except for how uneven it is here in places. And it's that unevenness. I would kind of want to go through there first with the, um, the, the ground, with the landscaping stuff. And I didn't really want to have to mess around doing a load of landscaping now, which is why I wasn't going to do it. Let's bring that out a little bit further to about there. And then let's see if it's going to work. Are you actually going to work? Are you going to go through? It'll go up. And it's, it's whether he turns properly when he comes back the other way. But we can leave that one going there now. That one's fine. He's, he's doing his work. And it's, this one is the next one that I want to do something with. I want to get this down to the farm. And I want to get this tipped out. And then we want to get the other big bud that is down at the shop. I want to get a cultivator on that one. And I want to bring it up. And we're going to take that one. And we're going to join some fields together. It's got to be our next task. We've also, we want, to, we do want to, like, cultivate everything in together. Um, the only problem with allow create fields with the cultivator is that once I've joined the fields together and then I want to go and cultivate the bits in between, uh, it's going to treat them like separate fields. So it's going to take a little bit longer because it's going to have to do each one separately. But I, that'll, that'll be all right. That's not, that's not like any particularly great hardship, I don't think. Uh, I do think that I am going to go this way for once. I know that we've got the long road train, so really you wouldn't be driving this length of vehicle along tracks like this. Well, I don't think you would anyway. You'd, you'd want to try to avoid driving this length of vehicle down old roads like this. I mean, I mean, look at it. Look at this, right? It, it, there's barely more than a, 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 a bridle way up through here. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy does it. And also, we should be going a little bit slower. Like, the amount of weight that we've got, the, the, the amount of, um, we've got a load of grain in here. We've got 25,000 litres of grain, which is probably 15 tonnes of grain on board. Um, plus, we've got the vehicle itself, which is not going to be the lightest of vehicles, what with both the trailers and everything. Uh... 30 miles an hour down this track is probably pushing it a little bit too much. Teensy bit too fast for what is actually good for the truck itself. And I'm sure it'll be fine. 
I'm, I'm sure it'll be absolutely nothing to worry about. Go on, keep going, keep going. I, I won't bother tipping any in for the horses. We'll just dump it straight into storage for now, and we can worry about the horses later on. Actually, well, in theory, we won't have to worry about the horses at all. The horses are, in theory, all finished with. We don't need to deal with them. What I want is the big bud, uh, another cultivator, and get those up to the fields. That's, that's got to be our next task. So let's go to you. And switch you over to there like that. Start unloading that. And as soon as I got those... Right. Go on a little bit more. Those are done. So I can bring this one up and we'll unhitch the train right here. I put that one right there. It's, it's sort of right in the middle. It's not going to be taking up too much space. I can get round it easily with everything else that I need to get round. Right now, I don't need to do anything with it at all. I'm going to go up there, and I want to get you before I do anything, though. I want to go into there, and I want to get uh, Power Hour Cultivators. It's one that I want. I go along here. It's that one there, the Flexi Coil. But what I was wondering is whether I should use the plow. I think it's under subsoilers. Right here. The Culti Plow right there would be the one. Stevie's Mod Culti Plow is the one that we would want to do it, because this one here does go along at a fairly sedate pace. So if I was to use the Culti Plow, I'd probably want the Stevie Mod one. And I probably will use the Stevie Mod for plowing in the next series. Now that one there is 18 metres, that one's 24 metres. We haven't used this one yet. This one's only 12 metres. That's, that is a big old um, cultivator, that one is. This one, we haven't used it yet. No, we won't. We'll use that in the next series. Next series is going to be all about big stuff. So I'm, I'm sticking with the big buds at the moment. Release that one. We've already got one of these. So we'll, we'll have another one running. That's fine. I've got no issues with that. We'll stick with the big buds in this series. And then in the next series, once we get to it, once we've done our cotton harvest, then we'll start using some of the other stuff. We've got the case quad track. You've got some challengers. We've got the, um, the Ford T9. The T9 is actually my favourite one, I think, of those types. Good job I, I, I seen that. I seen that one coming. You don't have a lot of warning for when the train is on its way up through. The, like, the thing stays down for quite a long way after it's gone through. But when it's on its way up, you don't get a lot of warning. Now, I'm not going to try and weave in between those. I'm going to go up there because there's a car coming down around as well. And I reckon I'm just going to get hung up on the car also. Neither of which is a particularly attractive possibility. So we will ignore the car. We will ignore the rest of it. Sailing on up through here. Allow create fields. We should have it. Yes. We definitely still have allow... We, well, we have allow create fields on this car. It's just double checking. Making sure. Um, we will allow create fields... And we will start going around the edges of the new field that we want to make up there. I'm not going to go round the edges very much. With the very top end of the field, we're going to do some stuff up there. And then, but this bottom end of the field, I'm not going to do very much down here. That's, that's not something that I want to allow or create fields on. I'm not, I'm not really bothered about that. That one over there, we'll leave that one until last. Uh, how am I going to get around that car? I'm going to have to wait here. Till, yeah, we're going to have to wait here until that car has gone past. And then, hopefully, the car will go past. Yes, excellent. Right, now we can swing out and take up the whole road. we got another car on its way, so we need to get through quick. We need to get through fast before he gets up here, or we're going to have trouble. Because despite that car's delicate-looking appearance, I can assure you that if we were to go head-to-head... -head, the big bud would not come off particularly well. Um, those cars are built for impacts. They really are. It's a strange phenomenon that we've got in, in this part of the world. All the cars seem to be reinforced with tungsten carbide plates all the way round. They are completely impervious to all damage. It's actually quite cool, but still. Um, it, it is also a little bit of a jolly nuisance. Two tiny, tiny little bits of crop left there in the field. We'll ignore that. I'm just going to get over to here a minute. And I've got to decide how I'm going to do this. 
If I'm going all the way up through, uh, we might go round the edge, I think, with it. Like that. Let's go back over there. Right, it is at least going right up to the top end before it turns round. And that is doing a grand job. We've now got the entire field being cultivated up. And it looks really awesome the way it's dragging through there. Right, the other big bud has been working away industriously on the field over there. It's gone all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. So we're going to start this one working over here now. We're just going to run... Ma I'm thinking I'll run manually up the side. Although I was actually thinking it might be better if I go all the way around the outside. Just once. Manually. And then we'll, we'll sort of see. But also, I'm thinking that maybe we should just use this one to do the allow create fields because we can do that rather than worrying about any other plows i'll allow create fields on here so if i i'm going to start that right here on this edge um i'm not going to pretend that i'm just blending everything one into the other because i have something really cool that i want to show you and i'll do that before i start doing this cultivating job I want to go over here. This is something that has come out this week. So, yes, I have just started a new recording session. And I want to go into here. And I want to go into here. And we have got a brand new mod that has just come out. The first one, as far as I know. Small baler. We've actually... I love small balers. I absolutely love small balers. Right. So, I'm going to buy that one right there. Okay. And... I'm going to jump off of here and we're going to have a look. So there we go. We have a small baler. This is a brand new model. As far as I know, this has this is a, a brand new model that has been made exclusively for FS19. I don't recall seeing a model like this anywhere else. Uh, so, I mean, I could be wrong. It could be from somewhere else, but I don't recall seeing anything like this anywhere else. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to there and we're going to go over this way. There's our tractor. I'm going to reset that one. Yes. And that's going to reset to the shop. So it's right here. And then I don't have to drive it all the way back because, um, yeah, we, we don't really need to see that. What I want to see is this one hooked on to the baler. We'll probably, because I want to try this one out. So I'm going to have to go and do something for it in order to be able to try it out. So we'll go like this first. We've got unfold baler. Excellent. It does unfold properly. It goes out to the side. We've got a proper side-mounted baler right here that will pick up material and it will do stuff with it. That is absolutely brilliant. And we've already got a trailer that should, in theory, pick up small bales. And that is our big autoload trailer that we've been using for the eggs. That one should pick these up it's got a working beacon on the top that's absolutely awesome so what i'd like to do is i thought well we could we could do some straw or something like that and then i thought well no we've got a field of grass i did say i wasn't going to do anything to the field of grass before the end of the series but now what i'm thinking is we should mow that field of grass and then we can go over it with the hay turner and then we can go over it with the rake and then we can go over it with this bad boy I think that would be an absolutely wonderful thing to do, to go and actually turn to, to make a load of hay, small bale hay. That's what I'd like to do with this one. So I want to make some small bale hay, and we're going to do that as soon as possible. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the mowers hitched on to this tractor so that we can start cutting the grass around the field. And I'll do a little bit, and then I'll just leave the hired help going with it so that it can finish off most of the work. And then we can get back up to doing our field at the top. Because it is quite important that we get that field done up there. I, I want to get that job done. I want to get it all finished. So we're going to bring you down here. And I'll unhitch that one a minute. Now let me go and get the mowers. They're over in the shed over there. I will do once around the field with the mowers. Because we're not going to worry about that field right there. We're not going to plant it. We're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to leave that field exactly as it is right now. We're not going to do anything else to it. Let's come out of there and go and get the back mowers on. So I wasn't actually planning to do any more grass cutting at all. But then this mower, this baler came out. And as soon as I seen it, I thought, you know what? I have got to find a way 
to we, we, we've got to do something with it because you know small bales small bales and it's the first ones in um this version of the game that i've seen so yeah i, I definitely definitely want to do something with this so i'll go to there and start that one up and then control v to lower them down like that and we are away right we've got a nice thick crop in here we went and put the um the fertilizer across the field like we were supposed to and so we, we've got everything on here that we could possibly want we've got a nice we got a reasonable sized field it's, it's it is actually three fields here isn't it it's 24 25 and 26 all rolled in together so in theory um from what i remember well that's not so in theory is it and and in theory from um what i remember of sort of getting everything set on here it should be a reasonable sized field and it should be reasonable for the tractor to be able to turn around on this end we may have a little bit of a problem i might need to um just do an extra pass just on this side of the field in order to be able to get the mowers to turn properly you know now that i think about it we might just want to do twice around the field it might just be easier if we do twice all the way around because i mean it's going pretty fast it's not that big a field so we ought to be able to do twice round without too much issue. And then that bit will... Then we can just kind of leave that one going for a minute. And while it does its thing, we can go up and do the ploughing, cultivating with the big bud and the huge cultivator. Get that job done. And then we'll be able to leave that just doing its ordinary cultivating after we've done our bit. And bring you all the way over here like this. Now, I... Yeah, I do think we're going to need to go around again. In order to be able to get this to work properly, I think we are going to need to go around again. So bring that down to there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as rapidly as possible. And one of the ways of doing that is not picking the mowers up. So we'll go over this way. And it's up at that other end that is sort of, mo well, it's, it's the two sides of the field that is most important. Although the top end is probably going to help. Um, that's just going to make sure that everything is all flowing, uh, that, that there's plenty of room for everything to sort of all flow together. You got that bit there, which we were never really able to do anything with. I mean, I suppose with the, the Place Anywhere mod, I could have um, done something with it. But in the end, we decided against it. So, I mean, may maybe at some point I could have gone back and, and done something there. But because we were doing so little with this field anyway, it's, there didn't really seem to be a need for it. So I'm, I'm just going to leave that and we'll hope that it will work out all right. Hopefully this side of the field will also work out all right and it will turn. Because what it does is it drives up the really steep bank over there. The hired help does because although I know that they've improved it a little bit but it still does do it. It still doesn't sort of read that the ground is too steep for the tractor to be able to cope with and then it sends it off up there which is it, it, it's not great. It's definitely not great but... Um, yeah, well, it's, it's one of those things that we can sort of live with. There is another new mod that I have installed, and that's an animal... It, it's, it's an animal extension. It's not the one that puts the water into the animals. Um, it's another one that you press and hold the enter key, and it moves across animals at a faster rate, which is something that I've been wanting to get for a very, very, very long time. Since the day that FS19 first came out, it's my probably my biggest complaint with FS19 is the fact that a mod would even be required for that. Um, I, I still cannot fathom why the game was sent out with that feature removed. When it was, well, it wasn't quite like that, but that there was a good enough feature in FS17 and then it was removed. And, but you all know my thoughts on that one, so I'm not going to start, I'm not going to bother going into another rant on it. Um, so I'm just going to press H on there and let that one get started. Right, that's away. Excellent. I'll let that one just go there. Uh, no, I don't want to. Where's the nearest? Probably here. So let's jump out of there and we'll go over here and we'll just test out this mold a minute while the, the tractor is doing its mowing. 
And I should just be able to test it by going up to the gate and taking a look at the animal interface. So we go into here like this. And this is all the chickens that we own. Now, if I wanted to move them over, I'd have to click over on that side. And then I would have to keep spamming the move button. But now, in theory, what we should be able to do is I just press and hold. And every, you, you wait two seconds and it starts. And then after 20 animals, it does it like that. And then after 20, it then starts to go faster like that. That's absolutely beautiful. Honestly, that's, that's like poetry in motion. It, uh, that's, that, that would bring a tear to my eye. That, that really would. If, if I actually experienced normal emotions like a normal person, that, that might bring a tear to my eye. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. Okay, we'll, we'll escape from there and assume that nothing has actually happened. Uh, nope, nothing has happened. Okay, so that actually works. It moves the chickens across really, really quickly and beautifully and wonderfully. And it's amazing and I love it. And it's the best mod ever. And then we've got this one. As soon as the hay is ready, we will start on that one. But for a minute, let's just watch you a second. You're coming out there and doing your... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you carry on. You're going to be able a little while. Um, so we want this bad boy over here, and in order for this bad boy to get started, we are going to go straight into allow create fields. I'm just going to start it right now, drop that down. I have allowed the creation of fields. Am I going to regret trying to use this massive great big cultivator to do this? There is a possibility. There is definitely a possibility, but I'm hoping not. I'm not going to go too close to that road. Because it does get quite rough over towards the road, doesn't it? So we do want to just kind of stay away from the edge. But I need to be able to go right round all of our land. And then once we come to the inside bits, we're probably going to be... Uh, we will probably change the way that we're doing it ever so slightly. But I'm not quite sure how. Oh, I see. The big bud came all the way up here and it infringed on our property over this side. But yeah, you can see right on the edge where I am right there. It gets quite rough just there. Um, we're not actually on the rough bit there, but it does. It's, it's quite uneven ground. It's not very good. And then as soon as we come off the edge of this field, we move into where field 9 is. And there's a big chunk of land there that isn't actually any part of the field. I'm wondering how it's going to cope with that. Whether, well, not how it's going to cope. I'm wondering whether there anything in there is too rough for it or not. Is, is there going to be a load of uneven ground on this side? And also, no, we're not spanning the entire width to go right into the field, which is a little bit unfortunate as well. And I shouldn't have to change the direction of the wheel at all, I don't think. I think I can just keep it going like this. Uh, although uh, I can see the cultivator is bouncing up and down there a little bit. So it is rough on the edge, so I do want to sort of drift over towards our field a little bit. Although I think actually the field drifts towards up us a little bit. So it's, it's not all down to the um, just the field. Now, how am I going to do this? Do I stop, lift out, try to turn like that, or not? I don't think I will. No, we've missed a, a little strip there. We'll, we'll deal with the strips and the bits that we miss when we come back. I'll do a sweeping corner on here like that. We'll try to keep even sweeping corners if we can. And then we'll wander over this way. Now, I'm very aware of where this field goes. I'm sort of trying to keep a, a close eye on how uneven the terrain becomes. I don't want to go too far over to one side and have to do any sharp corners. I don't want any really uneven stuff right in the middle of it. We'll bring that one up there. I want to get the bushes just on our left-hand side. If I can pull those, if I can get those. Yep, there we go. We got those taken through. And it's a little bit uneven coming up here, but it's not too bad. This, tell you what, for all the power of this big bud, it's genuinely struggling here a little bit, isn't it? Well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.